I often hear interesting assumptions slash stereotypes when I'm talking to people about Minnesota. So I'm here today to set you straight about at least a couple of them. Some of these may be controversial and don't shoot the messenger. My name is Mary Schumann. I'm a realtor here and I make videos to help people learn about Minnesota and what it's like to live here. So let's start out slow, shall we? We're going to start with the weather. If there is one consistent thing I hear, it's that Minnesota is cold. I don't feel like other states like spark this much fear about the weather and I'm not quite sure why we do. Yes, it does get cold here in the winter and sometimes it gets very cold in the double digits below zero for days or maybe a couple weeks at a time but this is manageable we have heated homes heated cars and we dress appropriately <laughs> we have a saying not really proprietary toward minnesota but that there is no such thing as bad weather only bad clothing choices I'll have to do an entire video on dressing for your first winter in Minnesota because a client of mine actually requested that. Hi, Linda. <laughs> and yes, we do get snow and people do enjoy being put out, being out in it. Minnesotans as a rule are very outdoorsy and I think that even if you're not really one to want to go sit on the ice in the middle of a lake in winter and try to catch a fish, you're probably going to find that spending time outside in some way is really the way to go. I've helped a lot of people move here from very hot climates, many specifically because they wanted relief from the unrelenting heat, and they also wanted the ability to enjoy being outside most of the year. I'm gonna to have to check back in with them on how they felt their first winter experience went. But a myth that I often hear is that you don't need air conditioning here. And this is going to shock some of you, but we don't live in a bubble of cold all year round. In fact, I would say that we get some pretty extreme temperatures here. And people that live here love to make these jokes about the fact that that the wind chill can be deep in the double digits below freezing. And then six months later, we have a heat index that's 115. So we don't really mess around, but you do need air conditioning here. If you really want to fit in when it's super bitterly cold like this, you should say something like, it wouldn't be so bad if it weren't for the wind or <laughs> could be worse. That one applies to just about everything. Um, but in summer, you could throw out, it's not the heat, it's the humidity. And then somewhere in there, just add ufta. And no one's going to be the wiser that you're from out of state. So speaking of weather, I've had some surprised clients when I tell them to be prepared for tornadoes. Spring and fall are very active seasons um, for weather in Minnesota as cold and hot air start trading places. They actually do it quickly within a week. It seems like the seasons change. Um, the and Twin the Cities area tests their tornado sirens every first Wednesday of the month at 1 p.m. And it's good to know this so you're not like in Target wondering, what the heck is happening and why is no one at Target panicking when the tornado siren goes off? Most Minnesota homes have basements and that is a good thing. Even if you don't love basements and if you don't love them, keep that to yourself because people here really seem to love their basements. Just remember, conform, conform. <laughs> You're going to want to have an underground lair to escape to if you hear a legit tornado siren. And we hear them a couple times a year. It seems like they only see, happen at night. And I really appreciate the fact that we have a comfy bed down there so I can sleep while I wait for the tornadoes to potentially demolish my house. When a tornado warning sounds, it actually means that they have seen a tornado in the vicinity and that you should seek shelter right away. Don't be like some of these people that go stand on their front porch and look for it. That's smart. Other potential natural disasters are flooding, drought, blizzard, and severe thunderstorm. But you can look at the bright side because we have no real earthquakes, no volcanic eruptions, few wildfires, and zero hurricanes. Okay, here I go. I'm going to touch that third rail and I'm going to tell you about the political climate here in Minnesota. We have a reputation as a progressive and liberal state. This is true to some degree, 
pretty much mostly in the urban areas, but less so as you move out into the rural parts of the state where it becomes really quite conservative. And I think this pattern is true of most places in the United States and quite possibly in the entire world. We currently have a divided government with a Democratic governor and the state Senate is a majority Republican and then the state House of Representatives is majority Democrat. So what this means is people have to compromise. The state of Minnesota did vote for Joe Biden by a significant margin in the 2020 presidential election, but make no mistake, Republicans do have a strong voice in the state government here. Minnesota is quite progressive in many ways, however, and the Twin Cities area is really even more so. The Human Rights Campaign gives both Minneapolis and St. Paul a score of 100 for LGBTQ-friendly policies, and the state as a whole scores highly in pro-equality laws. We aren't perfect, but this is an inclusive place to live. Minneapolis recently or within the past couple of years, passed a minimum wage increase to $15 an hour, which is being phased in gradually to be completed by 2024. That wage is currently sitting at $13.50 per hour. And the focus on education here has been in place since the so-called Minnesota miracle in 1971, wherein the state government readjusted taxes to benefit the schools. This emphasis has faded a little bit over time, but education does remain a high priority in Minnesota, at least compared to the other five states that I've lived in. And then lastly, on the progressive policies, while we aren't Colorado, medical marijuana is legal in Minnesota, as are low-dose THC edibles. So what should you be afraid of here? Well, not all of the wildlife is benign in Minnesota. It's not all confined to the northern wilderness areas of the state either. The suburbs of Minneapolis-St. Paul have frequently seen black bear sightings reported. Um, coyotes are regular visitors, typically harmless to humans. Uh, we also have cougars, and by that I mean the cat. But we probably have the women too. But that's your business, not mine. <laughs> We don't really have venomous insects here, although we have a few spiders that will bite you and leave what's the equivalent of like a bee sting, but we do have a lot of ticks. So if you're walking through high grass, it's best to wear long sleeved shirts and pants and have the pant legs tucked into the tops of your socks. That's ideal. The other thing you can do is use permethrin. It's a spray that you can put on your shoes and clothing to repel ticks. And if you're spending a bunch of time outdoors, it's probably a really good idea. Ticks do not jump, that's a myth, another myth, and rather they actually attach to you as you walk by and brush against the grass, and then they like to burrow into warm, dark areas of your body. So I'm going to allow you to think of the possibilities here. Ticks are mainly a problem because they spread diseases like Lyme disease, among other illnesses. A key indicator that you may have Lyme is that you've been where ticks may be, which really is everywhere, and then you see a bullseye-shaped inflammation somewhere on your body. If you do see this, you should go to a doctor and get treated because Lyme disease is curable if you catch it early, but it can have long-lasting effects because it attacks your joints and it really makes you feel miserable. If you can't handle these things, maybe you should consider a different state. But in my opinion, it's all well worth the risk to live here. We do love it here. So if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me. You can drop a comment down below or my contact information is in the description box below this video. Have a great week. Thanks for watching.